The GMC Sierra has always driven in the shadow of the mechanically identical Chevrolet Silverado. But with both trucks due for a redesign for the 2019 model year, GMC is doing more than ever to distinguish the Sierra from its bow-tie-wearing sibling. The 2019 GMC Sierra boasts many of the new features introduced on the 2019 Silverado, which debuted in January at the Detroit Auto Show. But the GMC also gets a few notable tech features of its own, as well as a Carbon Pro Carbon Fiber pickup box. Carbon fiber is often used in performance cars, but GMC is the first to use the lightweight material in a production pickup truck. The carbon fiber box is 62 pounds lighter than a standard steel box and will be an optional extra. A steel box will come as standard equipment. As with the 2019 Silverado, GMC used multiple materials in the body of the 2019 Sierra including aluminum for the doors, hood, and tailgate, and steel for the fenders, roof, and the pickup boxes of base models. Altogether, the 2019 Sierra is up to 360 pounds lighter than the previous generation, GMC said. Those weight savings should equate to better fuel economy, although official numbers aren't available yet. GMC also created what might be the world's most complicated tailgate. The multi-pro tailgate opens at the push of a button, just like on many of the Sierra's rivals. It can also be reconfigured into a step or a place to rest your laptop, or your beer, and includes a fold-out chalk for keeping longer items in place while the tailgate is down. Like many other automakers, GMC is trying to bring a higher level of tech to trucks. The Sierra gets a trailering app that includes a pre-departure checklist, maintenance reminders, trailer light test, tire pressure and temperature monitors, and a feature for diagnosing trailer electrical issues. Other notable features included a surround view camera system. The rear camera mirror previously seen on certain Cadillac and Chevrolet models, and a head-up display. GMC claims the latter two features have never been offered in a truck before. The Sierra itself has a somewhat more conservative exterior design than the Silverado, which might be a good thing for buyers put off by the Chevy's more unusual looks. As with all of its other models, GMC will try to separate the Sierra from its Chevy sibling with higher quality interior materials and a glitzy Denali version, which will also come standard with adaptive suspension and an 8.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system with navigation. The engine lineup is identical to the Silverado's meaning buyers can choose between carryover 5.3-liter and 6.2-liter gasoline V8S, and a new 3.0-liter Duramax Turbo Diesel inline 6. The 6.2-liter V8 and the diesel get a new 10-speed automatic transmission. The 2019 GMC Sierra goes on sale this fall in SLT in Denali trim levels. Additional details and pricing will be released closer to launch. Honda CRV SUVs and Honda Civic cars with high oil levels are waiting to be fixed in China as Honda tries to respond to a growing chorus of owner complaints about overwhelming fuel odors in the vehicles. Based on customer complaints, the high oil levels and fuel smells have hit Honda customers hardest in the northern areas of China where low temperatures are common. Dongfeng Honda, a Chinese car company half owned by Honda, originally announced in February a recall of about 350,000 Honda CR-V SUVs and Honda Civics. The vehicles are equipped with 1.5-liter turbocharged Earth Dreams direct injection engines that, according to Honda, have oil levels too high due to short drives in cold weather. The automaker says the cold climate and short trips cause condensation and excess fuel vapors if the engines don't have time to reach temperatures that would normally burn off the contaminants. Honda says excess fuel builds up and stays in the oil pan where it would normally evaporate and recycle through the combustion chamber of the engine. In addition to the high oil levels and fuel smells, customers report illuminated engine warning lights, 
but Honda says the problems won't cause engine damage and there haven't been any reports of crashes. Dongfeng Honda told Beijing Media that experts from the Honda Technology Research Institute conducted lab tests and real-world driving tests in northern China and allegedly determined the high oil levels don't cause abnormal engine wear. The high oil levels also allegedly won't cause any performance issues with the CRVs and Civics, and although numerous customers complain about high oil levels and gas odors, no customer has alleged engine damage. Investigators further determined the engine warning light will activate when the oil level hits 21 mm above the limit of the dipstick. Honda and Dongfeng plan on resolving the problems by updating the gasoline injection control software, adjusting the ignition timing and speed of the engines and updating the fuel injection timing to effectively burn off excess fuel. Additionally, the automaker planned on extending the warranty to six years, but Chinese officials put the kibosh on the plans, at least concerning the CRVS. Chinese regulators say Honda needs to come up with better recall plans for the CRV SUVs and will likely need to do the same for the Civics. This means Honda cannot sell CRVs in the country until officials approve new recall repairs. Honda recommends limiting extended idling periods, using a block heater and driving the vehicle in a lower gear to cause the engine to warm up faster. The automaker says longer trips at higher engine revolutions will help the excess fuel and vapors to properly evaporate. While Honda stays busy responding to Chinese customers about the CRVS, the automaker has experienced its own problems in the US concerning gas smells in the SUVs. A class action lawsuit filed in 2016 alleges model year 2016 Honda CRVs have problems with fuel odors in the cabins, and a separate lawsuit alleges 2015 to 2017 CRV SUVs have defects that cause fuel odor problems within a year of owning the SUVs. The numbers behind Tesla Incorporated's long-distance semi-electric trucks are close to making sense for haulers looking at a shift away from diesel that may save them tens of thousands of dollars a year, according to an executive with DHL. Jim Monkmeyer, president, transportation at DHL supply chain, was among the first to order the truck Silicon Valley billionaire Elon Musk's company is expected to begin churning out in 2019. He says the 10 trucks ordered are a test run and that he is still years away from switching the majority of his fleet of trucks to electric. But he is taking heed of a major shift away from diesel and the money it could save DHL. He says he could potentially pay off the difference between the purchase price of a Tesla semi and a traditional diesel truck in less than two years, thanks to savings on maintenance and fuel. Monkmeyer told Reuters in an interview from his office in Columbus, Ohio, we are estimating that we could have payback within a year and a half based on energy usage as well as lower maintenance cost. The maintenance savings can be enormous as well. Just because the engines are much simpler in terms of the number of parts and the complexities of the parts. The payback benefit is one of the keys to the success of the new generation of electric trucks and DHL, a unit of Germany's Deutsche Post, has a history in the area, having already introduced 5,000 of its own electric scooter vans for local deliveries. The two-year timeline also chimes with assurances being given by Daimler AG's van unit to customers interested in its forthcoming electric sprinter van that the total cost of ownership will be the same as the cost to own and operate a conventional van over a few years. Monkmeyer says he does not expect to buy just Tesla electric trucks, but the in-depth discussions on price and feasibility that DHL is running on the trucks are in line with several small and large international haulers who spoke to Reuters. A truck runs around 65,000 to 100,000 miles a year, and Tesla has promised a 20% saving on the per-mile operating costs truckers pay now, estimating its new semi will cost $1.26 per mile compared to what it says are industry standards of around $1.51 for diesel trucks. Analysts, however, 
say the figures continue to evolve. The $1.51 cost assumes prices for diesel fuel and that fuel economy costs remain static. They also say fuel efficiency for diesel trucks is expected to advance further, with a compounding improvement in the high single digits by 2020, potentially limiting the cost savings advantage suggested by Tesla. Jeffrey's analyst Stephen Volkman said, the problem is Tesla are aiming at a moving target, and even with that the electric, trucks, would be lower cost, in terms of operation, but it wouldn't be quite as big a difference. Monkmeyer says the company is still mapping out costs, but believes the two trucks already look like they will be close enough to make the switch feasible. Still, he says larger concerns loom around Tesla's charging infrastructure and how haulers plan to switch from pumps in depots to swift mega-charging of electric vehicles. He says, the biggest issue is going to be how is that grid provided and how is it supported and how quickly can we get a network out there for use nationwide, throughout North America, throughout the world. That's a big question mark. So that to me would be one limiting factor.